Hey there. In October of 2020, the Center for Community Design and Preservation at the University of Georgia's College of Environment and Design led a virtual design charrette for the city of Hawkinsville, who wanted to recruit a brew pub as part of their downtown revitalization strategy. A design charrette is a multi-day workshop that brings designers and locals together to envision plans for the future. Due to COVID-19, we conducted this charrette virtually with several meetings and work days throughout the month of October. Students from our landscape architecture, historic preservation, and urban planning programs first met with local stakeholders, generated some initial concepts, and then used feedback from a community-wide survey to generate the finalized designs presented here. Brewery serve as places in which people can gather and connect, whether they are families, colleagues, or friends. Breweries often serve food, are housed in former industrial warehouses or historic buildings, and have indoor and outdoor spaces. Not only are breweries and brew pubs great community living rooms, but they are also known for being great community partners. As a historic small town with agricultural roots on the bank of the Okmulgee River, Hawkinsville is well poised to offer the qualities that brew pubs seek. Our charrette explored five sites as potential revitalization opportunities. They include a former laundromat, an empty lot, an oil supply company, and a cotton mill warehouse, all in proximity to our fifth site, the Okmulgee Riverfront. Our first site is the former laundromat at 44 South Lumpkin Street. Formerly known as Canards Cleaners, this building is between the Opera House and the Chamber of Commerce and across from the courthouse. Its location places it in the center of civil activity. The building is in good shape and is wide open on the inside to accommodate for a custom interior. Our initial concepts show that a food and beverage establishment at this location could exchange the non-historic windows with vertical folding windows to facilitate fresh air and provide an indoor-outdoor experience. The property has some additional space in the back, which, when combined with the Opera House lot, could be used for outdoor seating. The majority of responses to this concept appreciated the ability to incorporate outdoor seating and an entertainment stage, and saw the location downtown next to the Opera House as a benefit. Many were concerned that the building is too small, that there isn't enough parking around the site, and that the area of downtown has more civic function than an entertainment vibe. Keeping the small town feel and developing a family-friendly space is important to many. With this in mind, here are some of our ideas. The smaller square footage of this shelf space may be an advantage for the businesses that's just starting out. Because this area of town has more professional offices, the aesthetic of the business could lean more upscale indoors, yet feature kid-friendly spaces out back. The interior of the block is large enough to accommodate outdoor seating and parking, but needs to be organized so that it fits efficiently. Better management and consolidated municipal ownership of the block's interior could balance the needs of businesses and civic uses so that it can handle daily deliveries, parking, and a few picnic tables, but also transition to flexible space for pop-up events such as small concerts, movie nights, food trucks, and craft markets. Our second site is located at 80 Commerce Street. A two-story historic building was demolished at this site, leaving a gap right in the heart of downtown. While an unfortunate loss, the blank slate presents an opportunity to draw in pedestrians with a mixture of indoor and outdoor spaces. We proposed a new brick facade to frame the opening in a traditional way, but allow for open air courtyard seating between the sidewalk and the new building, which would be set back. This concept received a lot of positive feedback for filling a vacant space with a new building and incorporating a unique open air courtyard out front. Being adjacent to smaller businesses such as other restaurants would benefit all. Respondents liked the design example from Athens that showed how a new false facade could blend into a historic street, but having security bars on the window openings was seen as negative. Concerns included a lack of parking and the cost of constructing a new building from scratch. 
One advantage of this vacant lot is that it can be used as a pocket space for outdoor gatherings as is until a building is constructed. The city could invest in picnic tables, umbrellas, contained planters, and some string lights to create a convenient and COVID safe public space for outdoor dining. Allocating space for a food truck would provide a fun pop-up dining opportunity. Through a public-private partnership, a new building could be custom designed for a restaurant and include indoor spaces as well as outdoor amenities. A new brick facade could frame the opening in a traditional way with an open air courtyard seating just beyond. The interior of the building could be dining, kitchen, and restroom space. while the rear courtyard could accommodate for outdoor tables as well as a stage and screen for entertainment. Converting the on-street parking out front to diagonal spaces will provide a lot more parking for downtown, and there may be space for rear alley parking as well. Our third site is the Beard and Oil Company at 6 Florida Avenue. Located right off of Commerce Street in US 341 and next to the Okmulgee River, the former Beard and Oil Company offers great potential for a brewery. The building has retained many of its original features that appeal to the brew pub aesthetic. The lot is large enough to include outdoor seating and an entertainment space as well as on-site parking. Direct access to the Okmulgee River via a boat ramp could facilitate adding a rental kiosk for kayaks and tubing. Initial feedback has been positive for this location, citing its riverfront views, plenty of space for outdoor seating and recreation, and river access opportunities for kayak rentals. Concerns included potential environmental mitigation, lack of parking, and frequent river flooding in the high rain events. This new site design includes multi-level outdoor decks and a grassy lawn on the riverside of the historic warehouse with parking on the far side. A kayak rental kiosk is shown in the lower part of the site between the boat ramp and the bridge. City assistance in mitigating any underground storage tanks should be offered as an incentive to make this development a reality. Though our initial research shows that the underground tanks have already been removed. The building should be rehabbed in a way that retains its character, including its faded white brick facade, arched windows, antique oil company signage, and large garage doors, which could be rolled up to provide indoor-outdoor space. This plan addresses flooding and parking concerns by having the rental kiosk above the flood zone with a parking area that accommodates cars as well as vehicles pulling boat trailers. The parking lot is screened from the brew pub deck with low trees. Our fourth site is the Vintage River Market, a large warehouse located in the Cotton Mill Lofts Complex. It is adjacent to the new City Hall site, Veterans Memorial Park, and the river. The space is approximately 20,000 square feet and would be ideal for an operable brewery. The open air building and adjacent parking lot are spacious enough to provide a large, accessible gathering space for community events, such as farmers markets, concerts, craft fairs, and holiday celebrations. Locals remarked that this would be a great space to hold large community events and include multiple vendors, and there is plenty of parking. Concerns were that the warehouse is too large and feels closed off inside, and that it is hard to see the proposed outdoor area from the road. Adding large industrial style metal windows to the broad street side of the building will let more light into the interior and make the building feel more active and inviting. Upgrading the front entrance with wider steps, an access ramp, outdoor seating, and street trees creates a welcoming entrance across from the riverfront park. The interior entrance can also be softened by creating spaces for vendors and adding string lights and contained planters. The mill building's history could be displayed on site and access to the river should be accommodated as an amenity. The excessive amount of paving in the underutilized parking lot could be reduced beautifying the area with landscaped areas of shade trees with seasonal color as well as comfortable spaces for outdoor seating. 
perhaps even accommodating a large pavilion. Our fifth and final site is the Okmogi Riverfront. The Okmogi River could be a great source for various recreational uses such as fishing, boating, tubing, walking, and cycling. Currently, only a small stretch of boardwalk allows for people to walk along the edge of the river, and it is connected to the Veterans Park by a steep set of stairs, which are in need of maintenance. Lack of activity makes the Veterans Park feel neglected. Many respondents echo the need to beautify the park and take advantage of this unique resource by making it accessible, providing activities for all ages, and extending the river rock to create multiple recreational opportunities. Concerns were that the fluctuating water levels, the ability to maintain the park's appearance year-round, and road noise. Taking this into consideration, the design suggests using dense plantings on the edge of the park next to the bridges to buffer any road noise and create a sheltered area in the center. Several areas of seating are included under the shade trees and the winding path creates a walking opportunity for adults. Wide terraces down to the river reveal a greater view of the water and provide lounging areas. Activating the space with a playground and splash pad, perhaps designed to look like steamboats of old, will draw in families to downtown. Expanding the river walk in both directions, from the boat ramp down to the Mile Branch Park, would greatly expand its functionality. The extended river walk is high enough off the water to avoid floods, but consider a peer-supported floating dock at the water's edge to provide direct access for fishermen and others. Given all the potential that exists in Hawkinsville, here's an idea to consider. The small city of Monroe, Georgia, with a population of almost 15,000 people, was looking to attract a brewery to evolve its downtown scene. The city teamed up with an interested owner of a historic warehouse and initiated its conversations with Southern Brewing Company, a brewery located 40 miles away on the outskirts of Athens. A public-private partnership was formed to turn the warehouse into a taproom that serves the Southern Brewing Company beers that are made in Athens, therefore providing the tasting room aspect of a brewery without the full production operation. The landlord prepped the building and offered an attractive lease. The city invested in upgrading sewer lines and plumbing, as well as beautifying the alleyway and closing a small side street to provide parking. The brewery makes its own beer elsewhere and just has to bring it over, so their margins are better and the tap room can be profitable. Because of this and the fact that there are other restaurants downtown, the decision was made to not serve food and instead advertise local menu options within the tap room. This saved on constructing a kitchen, plus it promotes other downtown businesses. Southern Brewing Company says the taproom concept works for them because of all the investments the city has made in downtown as well as for their space. Perhaps a similar partnership could be formed in Hawkinsville with operational breweries in Macon, but with the option to include food service as well. The Charette team has presented redevelopment ideas based on the opportunities and challenges of the five potential sites. It has been a pleasure to work with the city of Hawkinsville to complete this project. Thank you to our student volunteers, our partners at Archway, the Carl Vincent Institute of Government, our Hawkinsville stakeholders, and UGA Extension for all the help throughout this process. And most importantly, thank you to the community of Hawkinsville for all of your amazing feedback and overall commitment to revitalizing your downtown. It has been a pleasure to work with you. Thank you and goodbye.